So David, why, why is there such a difference in opinion about PDL one expression and response to these agents? I, I, look, I think the data are, uh, are conflicting and uh, we tend to be reductionist uh, in the way we look at things. And we would love a marker where we send it off, comes back and says, look, this marker links to therapy X, please follow the dots. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. And, and uh, as, as uh, Betsy and uh, Dean were discussing earlier, it, it may be that patients uh, that are in this immunologically challenged state respond both to chemotherapy and to checkpoint inhibition very well. So uh, I think we have conflicting data. Uh, we have sets where uh, we're looking at presumably the same population of patients where with, with one of the monoclonal antibody therapies, we get a response that seems to relate to pdl one expression. And then uh, with, with another one that, that we would assume is not terribly different in our clinical experience, uh, it, it's the reverse, we don't get an effect. And also, um, the disease state matters. Whether the patient is eligible for chemotherapy as first line, uh, seems that, that seems to be a different set to platinum pretreated patients. So uh, we're having trouble grappling with what's a dynamic marker. We know it changes. Um, and also we just have a snapshot of a particular tumor that's taken, which may be the day before we want to start therapy or within a week. Um, or it could be from a uh, cystectomy or nephrourotrectomy that was done seven years before, and they're likely to be very different. Right. You know, David, I think that, that's, that last part's very critical. Mm -hmm. None of the studies that have been reported have really told us what percentage of samples come from what timeline. Yeah. So we're interpreting things based on um, actually, frankly, somewhat incomplete data. So it's really even harder to speculate about that. Right. Ex exactly. In fact, perhaps uh, Arjun's study of uh, in platinum and eligible patients where he found no correlation between pdl one expression and the overall outcome, that perhaps uh, is because that that tissue is probably the closest that we would have to the actual treatment. And perhaps you'd like to comment on that because that, that may be the reason why we didn't see anything. Right, so I mean, in, in the study you're referencing is Invigor 210 cohort one and similarly, similarly Keno 52, and both of those studies tested immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy, PD-1 and PDL one respectively, um, in the first line setting in cisplatin ineligible patients. And by simply, by virtue of the fact that these are first line patients, you're gonna have younger tissue that went into the biomarker testing. And in fact, actually we looked at that and the median age of the, of the tissue is probably somewhere in the range of about 100 days or so. Whereas in the second line studies, it's much longer, probably on the order of something like 300 days or so. And that certainly can impact uh, the, the, the utility of the you know, paraffin embedded block that has been, you know, the tissue has been sitting in wax for, for years versus younger tissue and then the applicability of doing ISC staining on such old tissue. If, in fact, on the phase one trial, there were some patients that we had that had archival tissue from years back that turned out to be negative, and then we re-biopsied them, and we had some positive patients right. out of that. So it, it's, it's a very, very difficult issue. Betsy, you'd I like to comment? Wondered, so one other maybe simpler explanation for why pd one is less predictive later is that the studies where the discovery set defined the pd one cut point and the test across drugs are all where it performed the best. Mm -hmm. So your atezolizumab trial, the frontline keynote trial, right? The biomarker looked good. It was developed in that set. And then when you apply it to subsequent set, it's mm -hmm. just a law of statistics, right? right. There's exactly. fallout. And exactly. so it may be that that's a simple explanation for what we're seeing. For Duralumab, for instance, we've only seen the test set, right? So I think we really need to see, for instance, and how it's important to remind out. people there are right. multiple PDL1 assays. Right. None of them been used in the mm -hmm. same study. That's right. They look right. at different things. That's right. We're a long way away from understanding how to apply that across the disease state. But we yes. have to validate a biomarker in order to believe in it. <laughs> right. so, so, so. so we have a dynamic disease over time, yeah. right? We have a dynamic, you know, Im immunological environment over time. And then we have multiple assays with different antibodies with different reads, and we expect one answer. Right. Exactly. So I think that that shows that com right. we can't boil it down as you're, you're Absolutely. So. What, what we really need is an imaging agent or <laughs> or some liquid biopsy that we can monitor on a real-time basis. We need something to validate yeah. right. across that. But, but the yeah. challenge is clearly the immune system is not binary. Right. It's not along a continuum. Exactly. So you're trying to measure exactly. a dynamic thing in a very static environment. There is some correlation with pdl one expression. I think, in my opinion, I think that's the most we're going to get with pdl one expression. We need something better.
Exactly. So I think the, the PDL one story, we're gonna hear uh, from the lung cancer uh, people that they're trying to uh, compare the, at least four of the different antibodies out there. And they uh, do seem to perform differently in different settings. So we'll need to move through that. And I would suggest that uh, with our current therapeutics, PDL one in, in tumor tissue is not gonna be the entire answer. Um, but there may be linkage in, in, in uh, one therapeutic, which is really good. And that may make a difference for that particular therapy and the, uh, the, the biomarker that goes with it. That's a, that's a really good point because in the, in the lung tissue, there's harmonization on pdl one expression on the tumor, but it's less so on, on, on the infiltrating immune cells, and so right. it really becomes highly complex. Yeah. So when you do these assessments, it, you, you get more questions than you answer because I think the heterogeneity of what's in those lymphocytes, even if you're just looking at pdl one is fascinating. I don't know what it means, but we need to try and work it out. You know, I think as David McCockey said in his talk the other day, we need to get past PDL one and start <laughs> looking at other things, and I think that's important. But, but David, you actually mentioned a case recently uh, from California of a patient who uh, was trying to get uh, one of the checkpoint inhibitors uh, for, comp for use. His insurance company denied it based upon PDL one study. Maybe you can elaborate on that because it's important that, that we don't uh, uh, eliminate patients based upon their staining. Right. So in, in our Los Angeles County Hospital network, um, almost two years ago, uh, we were faced with a problem. We have a capitated network with very limited funding. <coughs> uh, if we gave everybody checkpoint inhibitors who possibly qualified, we'd probably close the hospital in April of the year and have to get to December. So, um, and uh, we do get help for what's predominantly an indigent population from our pharmaceutical partners, but uh, the, the uh, pharmacy was trying to rationalize use and at the time we had data to suggest, uh, an early data not validated, that uh, PDL1 would be a good marker in, in renal cell, in bladder, lung, and certainly in melanoma, where I think it is useful. And so they've said we need to have PDL1 positivity for us to give a checkpoint inhibitor. Now we're due to review this uh, and sit down after the two year period, and I, I think there will be some changes. Uh, but I think they just had to have a response to rationalizing therapy in a, in a, a dynamic milieu. Um, as it happens, uh, we are able to get most of our indigent patients who would benefit uh, the opportunity of getting one or other checkpoint inhibitor. Um, and we just have to kind of work at it. And we're talking about policy, which has aged rapidly. Uh, and and we'll, we'll hopefully catch up with the information. But it's just one way of, of trying to limit uh, and rationalize the, the uh, therapeutic. 